What are your thoughts about the idea that America has once again entered a phase which is very dangerous for people of African heritage? And that Africa might be the only real viable alternative than being annihilated and squashed in a new fascism. Yeah, more and more people, the good thing of it is more and more people actually open up their minds, but I still have you know, those out there that you know, they're going to hold on for dear life, and they're, you know, while the ship is sinking all the way down, they're still, they're still keeping their faith. That's right. Things like that, but Gunnar Myrdal <laughs> say, those who prefer to stay and fight it out here. Yeah, so uh, it's one of those things where, you know, when you, you look at the, the split of the population, that uh, you're going to have a low percentage that will leave, so... Um, those who are going to stay have to figure it out. But uh, I feel like, you know, we should, you know, we as a people should always open up ourselves to the world. We're in a global world and, you know, the African continent is the future and it's, you know, it's grown. But, um, you know, we have to just try our best to find better ways to get people connected to planning something out in the future, whether it's investment or relocating and things like that. And just being more open to it. But I just feel like the, you know, with all the brainwashing and everything that's been drilled in your head as a child and in school until now that enough of us, you know, it's like almost no matter what, it's like, you know, that, that zombie in the movie, just a zombie, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, and so on. So, but for the people that want options are open, I'm just, I'm enjoying this time to where we can show people that, you know, that America is not the only, only game in town, town, you know. My family left from Jamaica in the 80s to come to, you know, come, left from Jamaica to America, you know, for the so-called better life. But, you know, you realize that, you know, when, you're, when your people come here, you're getting the lowest type of jobs and things like that, and you have to work your way up. And what you're doing is building someone else's society, economy, and, you know, country. So we ask ourselves, what if we're doing that in our own country, in our own continent, and, you know, in Africa? Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, and then doing more business mm -hmm. with each other. You know, like the things you talk about, black, you know, global uh, corporate economics. Mm hmm that's right, that's right. So, and, so that's where we have arrived now. We that's where we have out. arrived. And it's still it's unfolding. unfolding. It's, it's unfolding. unfolding beautifully. To travel to Africa is a blessing. To travel multiple times, now you start to get a real sense of what is going on. It's not all rosy. But I can tell you this much. Every time I've gone back, I've seen very significant improvement on infrastructure, improvement on the schools, improvement on our relationships. And I think with our better understanding comes a better orientation to what we can contribute to, con to make sure that it does sustainably continue to improve. One of the things that Africa for the Africans has done on all of its trips is to visit areas, uh, be they rural areas or schools, and to make a contribution, a tangible contribution to the progress. I'm still stunned by our trip to Benin to visit the Ecologia Academy. Oh, yes, that was beautiful. Uh, and that was like, a, you know, one of those last minute uh, impromptu uh, connection. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can you give our, I've told this story a few times, but can you give our audience, now you've been back to Ecologia, am I correct? I went there one time. And, and, you know, I didn't get back to the land. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of those planning things in the time that we had in Benin. But I did meet up for dinner at the restaurant twice. You know, I, you know mm -hmm. somehow we always find some way to just make sure we support the, you know, the, the people need to support, uh, to show some level of support from the African diaspora also. That's right, that's uh, right. Uh, you know, so, you know, I tell people that we mix it up. So this family fa is from, uh, you know, like he said, uh, from the Guadeloupe, the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, they did build up the restaurant and mm -hmm. you know, the food was just as good, if not better. And awesome. once again, they planted everything organically from, from their farm. farm. Tell uh, if you can two back -to -back give meals. our audience a little bit of the background about how they went there, how they found their mission, launched the school, their relationship with the local community, local children, and then the government's response to their efforts. You know, I wish I know more of that, sir, but what I can tell everyone, uh, uh, the family did move to France, and from France, just like, you know, we're in America, you know, you're thinking about Africa and repatriating, so they selected a country where they can speak the common language, um, mm -hmm. and, and French in Benin, and once they went there and showed their connection and showed what they're looking to, to do, the, the government, government uh, you know, the government connected them with land so they can build a school and also 
for them to uh, build uh, you know, additional farm and, and more school. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of like one of those things where, you know, we have to be there on the continent to get things done. Just like I mentioned to my friends who got citizenship for Sierra Leone. So, uh, you know, I just, I just love the, the, the energy of this, the positive example of everywhere we're going, we're meeting people from the diaspora that's repatriating and they're, they're putting the work in. And uh, this, you know, I wish I, me and other people could do a little bit more to support more people on the continent. Mm -hmm. but, um, you know, but, but those, those are, are practical, practical examples, examples and many, many more. Yeah. The st way I tell that story is, just briefly, that they, out of their own initiative, launched the school. They had a beautiful relationship with the locals. Being around all of those beautiful children who were singing to us, and I have this photograph of me holding a little girl surrounded by a bunch of other children. That photo is so incredibly dear to me because it is the past, the present, and the future. But that the government appreciated their efforts. They gave them four hectares of land, and they took us on a tour where they had built this tiny little village, even the children helping to build the buildings. You remember the, the mushroom, mushroom hut where they, they grew, grew mushrooms in? Oh, yeah, man. I love that. That's, that was a nice echo layout. That's right. And what were the names of the streets in their little village? Do you recall? Oh, uh, no. Uh, there was, I know yeah, there was a Marcus Garvey Avenue. You remember Garvey a, lot more than, a lot more than I do, uh, but uh, yeah, there was a Marcus. I do need to go back and even look at some of the footage there because oh, that was an incredible experience. I know they and had sometimes a... Sometimes uh, you do so much, you don't really... Well, you, and you've that. been there the so many times, special. so you've got so many memories. But this particular one, they had street names, uh, Harriet Tubman, Marcus Garvey, I think, um, uh, Thomas Sankara. They had, <clears throat> they had just built this beautiful little village. The playground that they built for the children, made of all natural materials, was just absolutely stunning. They were growing their organic crops on the land to use to feed the children and for the restaurant. And then, as I recall, just before we got there, the government had granted them above the four hectares another 200 hectares of land. If I can recall, we drove out to the land, but it was completely undeveloped. But we did get a chance to drive out and see it. You recall that? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, I do recall that. And, um, and, and that's, that's what I meant, to, I meant to find out. Uh, and I didn't talk much with them about uh, that development, but you know, that'll be another thing I can check with the next time I connect with them on um, how that development has been working out. But they, they basically was telling me that everything has been good and everybody was just so happy and smiles everywhere. Mm. And I think they're just very happy and surprised to see us because, you know, sometimes you don't always make it back to that same country and connect That's with right. the same people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Africa for the Africans, the ORG. <laughs> We do have the blog talk queue is open in case you want to call and ask a question of Brother Bomani about your, your Africa, Africa experience. Do give us a call at area code 646-716-9835. That's going to get you right through to speak with Brother Bomani. Press the one button when you get on the blog talk queue. That will send me a flag and let me know you have something you want to share on today's topic. This uh, this is just so, so great. Brother Moani, I don't know if you've been following my activities. I had the book come out, The Blackest Soil, Africa Can Feed the World, came out last May. Since then, that book has just, it's become explosive in the hands of people who read it. It's, it's a, a plan. plan. It's uh, the subtitle of the book, Africa Can Feed the World. But then it's a scientific roadmap for agricultural preeminence for the 21st century. Since that book came out, we've putting together a multinational corporation, and I've gotten offers now for land development in a total of four countries, as many, wow. as, seven, <laughs> as, many as seven different projects, encompassing Ooh. over 10,000 acres. Wow. It's amazing. I mean, Africa, our offers Africa's to come. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's calling. calling. Africa's Africa begging us. But you know the work that I do. The work is significant. African Americans, I write book after book after book of plans for Afri Americans to get their act together using the resources that are already passed through our hands. But they are, there's no institutional appreciation of what I write in the Conscious Roster Reports, which you've been reading, what, for 20 years or so. But in Africa, it's wholly different. It's completely different. And when we go to Africa, we don't go over there empty-handed. The last trip I went with Africa for the Africans, our black 
or Living in Black group raised the money for a $15,000 FM radio station donation. Now, it took a long time for that to clear the border. <laughs> and uh, finally made it, the equipment made it out to Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Kumasi. Uh, I know better now to get all the letters of approval before bringing the equipment in the country because we've been asked now to bring in a, a audio mixer to replace the audio mixer for a Uganda-based television network, uh, Record TV Uganda, for which, Brother Baimani, I don't know if you heard this, but I'm a weekly correspondent on their TV network. Yes, you did uh, mention that to me as far as uh, your connection in Uganda. And mm -hmm. honestly, I just believe that's incredible because that's what I'm talking about. I'm like, we have 50-something countries. That's Who's right. going to be the people that's going to be out there, honestly, and connecting them. Every time I turn around, people try to get me to go to more countries. I was like, That's I've been right. to 10 already. I need to build a foundation, at least one. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, and, you've uh, done and great in Ghana. Later on. You've done great in Ghana. I'm real curious about your experience in Tanzania, because I'm a big fan of Tanzania, even though I've never oh, yes. been there. My second favorite country in Africa. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tell us about uh, your experience there. Where did you go? What did you see? Okay, okay perfect. perfect. Absolutely. Uh, uh, let me just give you a quick flow at Tenere. We, we did uh, three days in uh, Arusha, mm -hmm. uh, uh, two days in Dar es Salaam, and three days in uh, Zanzibar Island. Mm -hmm. uh, so our journey started, uh, you know, we flew into Kilimanjaro Airport and then drove to Arusha. And then uh, the first day out, man, we went to this, uh, it, it was like a one hour away from uh, the city of Arusha. Mm -hmm. We went to the Arusha National Park, which is good because a lot of times you want to go to these national parks and they're so far away. So that was perfect. I mean, it wasn't the Serengeti, but this was, you know, I'm not a big, I'm not into these big safaris and things, but we went and we saw, you know, you know for, for a few hours driving around the park and everything, got a nice little presentation and our tour guide did excellent explaining things as we drove past and drove up on animals and got a chance to just feel the nature and you know, enjoy lunch in the park. So grand experience, looking forward to doing it again in November coming up. Uh, another day we went to, uh, you know, went to, we went to two history museums, uh, which I'm one of the people that just always have to put that on the itinerary. Uh, uh, so, so, uh, went to a Maasai market, did a lot of shopping. I also uh, went to a nice cultural village, you know, where they did the uh, coffee presentation, so that was cool. And uh, I went, went to, to another, another school, you know, we always going to schools and you know, donations and financial, financial contribution. contribution. Uh, so those are the first set of videos that uh, just we recorded and just shared, and that was just so memorable. And uh, 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 the other highlights, uh, once we went to uh, Dar es Salaam, Dar es Salaam is very, you know, it's a busy city. Didn't plan on spending much time there, but uh, we had two nice days. Went to, uh, you know, went to a nice Jamaican restaurant in uh, Dar es Salaam where we met up with a group of people who repatriated from the African uh, diaspora uh, or some that's uh, looking to move. So that was great, man. It was like great networking and uh, was able to just build some fresh connections. So, you know, now... Whenever we go back, we just build on to that. And, uh, you know, got a chance to just feel the, you know, the, the nightlife scene and things like that in, uh, you know, in, in Tanzania with uh, friends that uh, were there and everything that showed us around. And then the highlight is that beach resort, Kenwar Rocks Beach Resort that we stayed at on Zanzibar Island. That was just a beautiful experience. Uh, we, you know, we wasn't out swimming and things uh, every day, but uh, we did go out one day. We stayed on the beach one day where we just kicked back and mm -hmm. did water sport and just enjoy it. And that was uh, this you know, phenomenal and this good experience. And on top of that, brother, the food is the business. You know, you're talking about a country with seafood. So, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, you should see some of the places that we're taking pictures of, we're doing videos of. Uh -huh. Like, I've never done that much vlogging as this in-depth as that. You know, I guess because it was a new country, but I was showing people everything that we're doing. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And the, I, from my understanding... These cities, Dar es Salaam and Arusha, are being touted as some of the most desirable cities of the future to want to live in. Oh, yeah, they're well-developed, both mm -hmm. of them. They say Dar es Salaam, the, the Paris of Africa. That's what they call Dar es Salaam, the Paris of Africa. Yeah, it's like a, it's a huge city because when I, when, I, when I thought about that, I thought about, like, you know, the, the big cities in, like, Brazil, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, and... Not saying that they're toe-to-toe -to -toe on the same level, but Tanzania is not playing. They are developing. As a matter of fact, one of the most unique things um, that was updated is that the Doma, which is the, the, you know, the, the new capital, everything is being built little by little there. 
as a new city to centralize government operation and also relieve the, the, the stress, the traffic, and certain things uh, that's in Dar es Salaam and also you know, make it safer for the president and the government uh, and things like that. So uh, they're, they're moving and grooving and growing. And it's um, and I just look forward to keep on going back and keep on building the relationship and look to build something just as special as what we're doing in Ghana for like uh, East Africa, West Africa connection. Mm -hmm. And the president of uh, the Republic of Tanzania, his name's John Magufuli. Even though he catches a little bit of heat from the Western press, this man is just, I think he's just magnificent. I really do. I've been pretty impressed with this third generation of African leaders that have now come to national prominence. Yeah, they're getting there. And the unique thing about what he did he was one of the first persons to open up his country. They were open up, I want to say, in them maybe up in July, in July, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, Ghana ended up opening up in uh, in September. Uh, so it was one of those things where it changes certain things because some a lot of people that were going to either South Africa or mm -hmm. Ghana or other countries, they end up going to Tanzania and then they end up going there and falling in love with the country to where they're all. <laughs> a lot of them are there right now. That's so, right. The move that he made, it saved a lot of us because a lot of us was just trying to go make our move to the continent and we just couldn't find a country because all, most of the countries were just on lockdown still. Mm -hmm. So yeah. he had an incredible vision. And then when we went there, you know, it was in certain places you had to wear masks, especially at airports and things like that. But mm -hmm. it was weird because I didn't see nobody wearing masks throughout the, the place. And, you know, so you asked people. You know, you're doing your field research, talking to people, asking people, you know, mm -hmm. are people dying at a higher rate of COVID-19? And you ask them certain things and people are telling you no and they're telling That's the right. country is safe. That's right. And it was like, wow. And the same thing when I went to Ghana, you know, more people were wearing masks, though. But, mm -hmm. you know, no, nothing was, you know, you ask people, is anything going on as far as death uh, or, 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 or people getting sick or anything more than they used to? And they say no. That's the answer right. is no to all these questions. So I'm telling folks like, yo. Mm hmm Get out there and you know keep it moving, and you know these are two countries I know for sure because we just came there and everything is all good. That's right. And His Excellency President Mugufuli, um, uh, Magufuli, excuse me, Magufuli, also has been touting traditional African medicine to prevent these infections, and that's the exact same parallel research that I have been saying for years. The traditional African medicine, the use of nutrition and herbs and natural elements is the way for us to go forward. So they're proving it. And uh, they're a practical example of it because if it wasn't, then you'll see a lot of chaos going on in the country. That's right. Did you see a lot of construction going on? Yeah, but absolutely. I even did a video talk about the road construction in uh, Tanzania. Construction is everywhere. Uh, from road construction to building construction, this and in the same as uh, when I was in Arusha, and the same is also in Zanzibar Island, mm -hmm. and also the same when I went um, all over Ghana. Mm -hmm. The content is every you know that's you know uh, I guess you know you know you now I'm telling people is like everyone thinks that people just want to come to America, but the continent is doing what they have to do, and people are growing and building Man. and and making things work, and and more of us join a party, the better. Brother Bumani, you got me so excited. <laughs> I see people in the uh, YouTube chat are excited. They're loving the conversation, too. Um, let me ask you this. When are you going back next? How many trips do you have up and coming this year? And can people still get in on these trips with you to uh, travel to the mother continent this year? Uh, yes, I got uh, all our journeys are set to go. The uh, first uh, journey we have is set for... Um, April 2nd to the 12th, and that's Senegal and Gambia. That's four days in Senegal and four days in the Gambia. Mm -hmm. Complete black itinerary, four-star uh, hotel resort, uh, both uh, black ownership that uh, we're just looking to share with people that uh, our people have class and we can build elite, unique hotels and we can give our people a great experience in two beautiful countries. Um, so I look forward to that and look forward to documenting all of it and sharing with uh, everyone. Uh, but that tour, along with the rest of them, is uh, open uh, for those who want to reach out to me and visit our website, check out the details, and you know, and email us. Uh, absolutely. And after that, uh, uh, it is uh, Ghana, May twenty fourth to June fifth, mm. and that's uh, 
uh, you know, 10 beautiful days in Ghana, four, four in Accra, three in Cape Coast, Elmina, and three in Kumasi. Mm -hmm. And we have a citizenship conference, business conference, and uh, we also have land uh, presentations and a whole lot more uh, you know, on the, uh, the schedule. And after that, this, you know, it's uh, this, you know, kind of be working through the summer to work on our land development at Black Star Pan African Community. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I, I reconnect to Tanzania, that's uh, November 18th to the 29th. Uh, we have four days in Arusha, mm. three days in Zanzibar Island, and uh, two days in uh, Dar es Salaam. November 18th through 29th. In, uh, yes. So once again in Tanzania. Brother, Tanzania, brother, brother. Yes. Have you got and a then, seat wide enough for my big behind? Uh, yes, space is available for everyone. And then the last journey we have is uh, Ghana, December 24th to January 5th. And that's uh, what I'm going to be updating on our website this week. So those are the four journeys uh, this year. And um, so we are ready to go. And uh, we're just accepting um, registration and deposit. And just you know, anyone who needs information, mm -hmm. we can talk and go through it. How, can they, uh, all there. How can they best reach you? Uh, yes, uh, they can reach me uh, directly uh, via uh, mobile or WhatsApp at 404 931-9429 uh, via email AFTA2010 at msn.com mm. and at uh, the website family again mm -hmm. yes. it's Africa for the Africans that org that's right and that's where we have a hundred percent of all the information I just uh, mentioned that's right all of these schedules there up there as well as the links as well as these beautiful photo galleries of previous trips I just sometimes get on Africa for the Africans org and I just go through you know I start off looking well let me go back and see what, what I was looking like on those tours but just every tour I just look at all the happy people the way they're they're dressing in the indigenous clothing and the the backgrounds are so full of greenery and freshness and uh it's it's, it's us it's us and i'm so grateful that you know i've been able to be on the team i want to join rejoin the team this year is going to be a, a pretty good continental travel year for me so i'm going to go ahead and commit myself to your tanzania trip in november and you know something I'm going to talk as many of my friends and associates into going along as well. And this is your, and you've never been, right? Or have you been Not, not to Tanzania. This will be my first trip. I did Tanzania. go to Kenya. I did go to Kenya in July 2014, and it was awesome. So I really love the East African community. I've only been to Kenya and uh, Ethiopia, and I'll be now going to uh, Uganda up and coming to uh, get these land these agricultural projects up and running but uh, our plan is to expand our agricultural projects all across the continent beginning in the east african community yes east africa yeah also been to uh kenya and then we've been to uh you know uh, ethiopia together with brother yao oh man was that which the i most saw in ghana lovely trip. Uh, you saw him in ghana yeah it, uh, uh, uh brother jerry uh African ancestral wall That's in our right. prom prom. Was so, he there with a group? Oh no, he's there. You know, uh, the snook just doing his work. Back and, yeah, you know, he lives uh, there also, and he has his work there. So, oh, I didn't know he had moved there. I know he's, he keeps a, a house in Addis Ababa as well. That's one of the most committed, hardworking, and genius brothers that I've ever known in my life. Brother Yao Davis, he's awesome. Yeah, he lives on those. Uh, you know. Two coasts. Uh, I don't know how he works it from California to uh, you know, to Ethiopia to Ghana, but uh, the man lives in all three places. Yeah, yeah. I have <laughs> another friend who does that as well. Just pure genius, and that's what genius does. It manifests a beautiful life for itself. Many of us don't even know our genius until we go to a place where our genius is appreciated. Now, you said you had visited Nairobi. I have had a chance to visit and spend time in a number of African cities. I think that Nairobi is my favorite. I love Accra, Addis Ababa, and I fell in love with Gondar. But I think Nairobi is my favorite city I've visited so far. Yours? Uh, yes, uh, that is a good question. Uh, so that's a good question. And I wasn't in Addis Ababa long enough. 
and I still feel like I wasn't in uh, in a Nairobi long enough. But uh, mm-hmm. Nairobi, uh, that was so long ago. That was like in 2005. So it's probably a whole different world. Just like Ghana was, just like you know, Ghana is a whole different world from when I first went there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but yeah, I agree with you. Just I like the vibrancy of you know uh, Nairobi, yeah. and um, and it seemed like you know this. East Africa does have cities like that, you know, vibrant cities. Mm-hmm. So when people are so, so for the people who are fascinated about cities, and you just got to get some in Africa. And you know, I prefer more the country area because I believe in development, you know, in mm-hmm. uh, rural areas. That's right. But uh, you got the cities right there if you want to move there and you know spend the. But only thing I got to tell everyone: all these cities. Sometimes we're thinking that Africa is cheap, but you know these yeah, cities no, because it's cost some money. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's uh, right. Of you're course, trying to live not... a certain life. Mm-hmm. You have to maybe either adjust, or you got to up your, you know, the, 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 your income that you're bringing in to move to different countries. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's another point I wanted to bring out: that many African people in America, we have the baby boom generation that are moving into retirement. Many of them now on fixed incomes, but the fixed incomes are ours are disproportionately smaller than other ethnic communities in America. And so many times our fixed income senior citizens are struggling. But if a person takes a $2,000, just say $2,000, it's not too high, it's not too low, monthly fixed income in retirement. In America, if they're living in Washington, New York, uh, Atlanta, L.A., it's going to be really tough living on $2,000 a month. But if you go to Africa, your money is amplified with purchasing power parity so that you can buy so much more for the same amount of money. I know in Uganda, the conversion rate between the U.S. dollar and purchasing power, I'm not talking about conversion to the shilling, but purchasing power parity is $3.335 for buying power for every one U.S. dollar. So therefore, in Uganda, your purchasing power parity on a $2,000 a year Fixed income or two thousand dollar a month fixed income is like six thousand seven hundred dollars. Isn't that true there in Ghana as well? You you talk about how far your income is going to go, right? Well, how Basically. far your purchasing power, not just yeah, so your income, but your purchasing your, power. Mm-hmm. Your purchasing power is going to go a lot further. Um, and number one reason why, if you move out, like I was mentioning, in the rural area, and you put your money together, mm-hmm. now you'd have this. You know, you'd have this expend the you know expend the power of that uh, money that you have but it's going to be a little closer even though you know the currency exchange a lot uh, it's going to be a little bit closer when you're in these cities you're right. um i'm not going to say it's like going to be dollar for dollar but uh in some variations you see certain things that's a little bit higher and some things a little bit cheaper but on average it's going to be closer that way that's why mm-hmm. i'm saying to people that think about getting land further out. And then the good thing about it, you can build your own sewer and your own type of uh, systems that you want to build. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to be at mercy to like, some people don't like, you know, the way certain sewer systems and things are connected in cities. Yeah, they still have the open, kind of the open sewage transport yeah, in, in parts of Accra. Yeah, and also Tanzania, I um, mm-hmm. also saw that it probably wasn't as popular, but uh, I did see that also out uh, there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. But in, in, in general, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, regardless of telling people that that, that cost uh, is getting closer to about the same, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know something, it, all of that's changing in this generation. The infrastructure construction across Africa is amazing. When I went to Nairobi, you drive around, you look at the the downtown area of Nairobi. Everywhere you looked, you saw these massive cranes raising these towers up. And those towers are the concentration of economics in the whole region. And, but then you can just drive, say, 20 miles, 25 miles, and you're in the safari lands. It's just, it's just spectacular that you have such access like that. In L.A., you drive for that time link that it would take to drive 25 miles, and you're still stuck in the same traffic jam. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Atlanta, yeah, no. too, right? <laughs> Uh, yes, and uh, you know these cities are becoming just bigger and bigger, and or or what I see and you see is this traffic is being extended further and further out. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Of course, now I will admit Africa has some notorious traffic jams. Oh yes, without a doubt. <laughs> coming yeah. into the air from the airport, usually almost in any country, coming in from the airport to the downtown area for our facilities is usually a, a welcome to Africa's traffic jam. 
Yeah, and with uh, better roads and things, uh, I have seen things flow a little smoother. But then at the same time, you know what happens. You, know? you, have, you have population growth and you have more people, persons, and vehicles That's and more right. transportation. So, yeah, so... It, it's like you know, it's like one of those problems that you never fix is the traffic problems. Right. If you know, and now uh, of course you... they're building a lot more light railway. I know when you and I were there, um, the Ethiopians were very proud to have just inaugurated their first urban light railway. Uh, yes, uh, that's um, you know, it's it's one of, it's one of, it's one of the technology that you know you you know you got you know you got to look into, man. Um, mm-hmm. You know, even here where I'm at, uh, you know, the Atlanta airport, you know. They have two unmanned trains. They got the one that go to the airport and mm-hmm. the one that goes through, you know, goes through from, you know, goes through the next terminal, mm-hmm. uh, and things like that, man. But uh, yeah, man, uh, it's uh, all these things, you know. Uh, we have jump on, and I love the world of this you know, modern, sustainable, clean technology. So now, you know, you don't have to pollute your country to build infrastructure and build factories and build a future. Mm-hmm. So for someone who wants to go on one of these tours, obviously for the earliest tours, they're going to have to kind of come up with a full payment rather quickly to be able to be included. But for a tour that's six months down the road, do you have a structured payment system that someone who can't maybe can't afford to shell out $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 at a time can get onto a structured payment system so they can pay that in sec- segments? Uh, yes, uh, you know you pay a deposit and you pay yourself, uh, whether it's for six months or a year. Mm-hmm. And the same schedule that I got in this 2021 is the same I have in 2022. So someone can literally start ahead of time and pace themselves even better. Mm-hmm. But it's all about the individual and when they're willing to get started. But I try my best to put the schedule out so people can plan it. But uh, so that's what I would recommend: a one, a six month to you know one year plan of just pacing yourself, and that's absolutely fine. But I do have example you know from the um in the website i have a payment uh option slash plan mm-hmm. um link uh from my website uh, on the main menu and it just give a list of um ideas of how to breaking it up mm-hmm. and then give different methods of pay yeah. so you know the flexibility is there That's and right. then we can always uh, agree to you know anything you know we can always make you know direct agreements mm-hmm yeah, yeah. Yes, the fle- uh, flexibility. Fle- flexibility is a, an African trait. I mean, when you go to mar- <laughs> when you go to market in Africa, that's when you learn the art of the deal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's one of the fav- favorite parts about shopping. Usually, when I go to Africa, Brother Bomani, I don't shop the first week. I watch everybody else shop. From what I'm kind of gauging what the prices are, et cetera, et cetera. And then I just kind of pace myself to the pace of the country before going into the markets. But some people, as soon as they get there, they see all these bright colors and artwork and everything. They, what they say first, they, I want to go shopping. <laughs> and then sometimes we see people by the end of the trip, they not only, they start looking, they start shopping for stuff like Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> They started missing being an African American. <laughs> you know, it, uh, yeah, you know, you know. Honestly, you do see that, but you know, and I, you know, I, I give people credit for for trying. Some people, it's uh, you know, it's it, you know, they have to put a little more more work into. It. But yeah, you see the fact. Even one person told me they're ready to go home one day, and I was like, "Wow, <laughs> you ready to go home? <laughs> I well, guess this is not your home." <laughs> yeah, this is. <laughs> <laughs> but I was hey. like, you know, well. You know, but I just honestly appreciate people for even trying and everything. That's and right. It's not for nice everybody. It's not for everybody, and, is it? No, and I've seen so much people who had big talks about they, you know, you know, you know tell you they're gonna mm-hmm. do all these things and they're gonna work with you. And then I'm at this point, and outside of yourself and a few other people, you're wondering where they are. Uh, but mm-hmm. you know, we gotta, you know, we have to, you know, you know, we, we, you know, we can't, you know, just like you told when you're younger, not don't give up on your dreams. That's right. And That's things right. like that, and. Uh, you know, look. I mean, we're we're here. We you know we're here, and we're here at the the perfect time. That's right. When people are really looking for options. Mm-hmm. The perfect time. People are really looking for options. Brother Bomani and I are doing our best to convince you, our our listening audience. If you have never been to Africa, it's the most magnificent opening of the new chapter of you that you will only have to imagine until you actually do it. The first time I traveled to Africa, Brother Romani, I went to Egypt, 
with uh, 56 of us went together with um, Clinton Crawford. And I was wonderfully happy to help arrange that. That was in the era of living in black. You remember how much yeah. clout we had. Yes, and I and, remember Clinton Crawford. Yeah, and as I was flying from across the Mediterranean, we had to, of course, uh, stop over in Europe to go south. And as I was flying over the Mediterranean, and the sea just goes on, it's a very large sea, the first glimpse of African soil appeared out my airplane window. Did you feel that way the first time you went home to Africa, that the first time you saw the soil, you felt this, this awakening coming upon you? Yeah, brother, it's a, it's a spiritual, incredible connection. Uh, this, you know, uh, it's all kind of different emotions and things going through your body and things going through your mind. But, uh, you know, you know, you know, because, um, you know, realistically, most of us never thought we'd probably just be there on the African continent. Um, and, you know, uh, based on everything that we've been told and things like that. So to be there and, and touch the soul. Magical, brother. It's just magical, man. And uh, I tell people, you know, it's something that they have to experience because, you know, it's it's something that's just what it is. It's, you got to experience the experience. That's right. That's right. And the friends that you'll meet on the trip quite often are going to be friends for a lifetime. Isn't that true? Yeah. So you meet the people that are coming with us uh, because, you know, the whole time we're connecting in, in groups and having conference calls and talking and you get to know people little by little. And then the people that we're going to meet there in the country and then the business people we connect. And that's one thing, you know, me, a uh, whole lot of networking, just like yourself, but, you know, this big on network. And I'm telling people that's the best way for us to you know, do nation building you know, because then you have good minds connect together. That's and, right. you know, even when we started the business conference back there in Ghana, that, that was the first time that we actually started when you actually came with me um, in October 2007. Mm -hmm. And you know, from that to now, and the people that uh, David has brought and connected with us, That's connect right. us with, you know, so uh, we just got to keep the network strong and keep it going. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing you're going to get with me, family, if you, if you, whether you join our community and come on the tours or do both, you're going to meet a whole lot of incredible people closer to your That's mindset right. and what you're about than you're more than likely ever meet in your whole period mm -hmm. of just going out and connecting with people because we, we draw a certain energy of people to travel and do business with us. That's right. Yeah, yes. beautiful group. I see a few comments have come in. Rhonda checking in. Ujato. Oh, Rhonda is there in uh, Atlanta. Oh, sorry, that city as well. Brother Gaynell or Sister Gaynell says hello. Rashida, homesick side. Thank you for the work that your brothers do. No institutional appreciation for your work, you say. Please explain further. Your books should be required reading part of the curriculum for every African liberation school globally. Thank you. Actually, you know, believe it or not, Brother Bomani, some of my books are used in on African university campuses. I was surprised when I first heard about um, Conscious Rasa reports being used in classrooms on University of Lagos. And now uh, that's uh, with the, the new books, The Blackest Soil and Futuronomics, they are even more widespread. Um, Rashida S. U. What is Bomani's number one favorite African country? Yeah, that's uh, Ghana mm -hmm. and then uh, Tanzania. Okay. She asks, uh, she says, I was born in Senegal and she lives in also in Osset Osa, City, a.k.a. Atlanta. Rashida Abdullah, if you've ever met her. I was born in Senegal. I went to middle and high school there and in the Gambia. I sure. wish I could go. She should maybe plan on going, uh, well... She says, I'd love to come to you all to Tanzania in November. Whoa. So I guess we're going to have the experience yeah. of having Rashida with us. Yeah, I'm sure I know Rashida because um, uh, then, you know, um, there's, there's somebody that's, that, that, well, I know the exact name. Um, so sometimes it's either the same person or somebody else. But uh, all she has to do is just send me an email and then I can just communicate with her and uh, exchange numbers and call and talk mm -hmm. with her and, and so on. So if you can just work that out in the chat and everything, right. it's all good. And I did for the promotion for today's program on Facebook, I did tag Brother Bomani Tayemba in there so you'll be able to see him that way. And anyone can always just get in contact with me, send me a message, send me an email, and I'll put you directly in contact with any of my guests should you need to have that conversation. I do see um, oh, Coach... Perfect, yeah. Coach Lemuel, Brother Lem Alpha Griot, says, I would love to go on either 
his Tanzania tour or his Brazil tour. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, for Africa One, Brother Money, we are looking to relocate to Tanzania from the UK. Are we able to link with you for investments and relocation information there? Um, you do have, we have had people from the UK accompany us on the Africa for the African tour trips. Yeah, it's just, um, I don't have anything like that really going on in Tanzania. We have, we have a few people that we're building and connecting with. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, outside of uh, that, um, you know, um, I, you know, I'm always open to connecting with people, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I'm always going to be honest with them. That they don't know what I can and what I can't do. Yeah. Uh, but no. I'm, I'm fine with connecting with them. But yeah, I can't really help them. Well, let me ask you this: connect with anyone to relocate? Have you ever connected on any of the Africa for the African trips with the local or the country's chamber of commerce and industry? I know they have one for each country. They have the Africa Chamber of Commerce and Industry (ACCI). But if you go to no, I haven't. Kenya, it's KCCI. You go to Ghana, it's GCCI. That's a great way of getting into a country. We did that when we went to uh, Kenya in 2014. Connected with the Kenya Chamber of Commerce and Industry, they got some speakers for a conference we were hosting there at the Kenya uh, National Conference Center. And on the third day we were there. Because of our connection to the Kenya Chamber of uh, Commerce and Industry, we found ourselves being invited to an audience with uh, His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta. That was an incredible day. So that's how we do it. We have to know, and this Africa for the Africans is one of the vehicles by which we now know. Brother Mamani, I'm, we're going to have to begin to wrap it up. But, it's, you know, every time you and I get started talking about Africa, we get so excited, we don't want to stop. But there are a lot of misconceptions about Africa that are pervasive among African Americans. I could just name a few. For one, after visiting Ethiopia, how do you, what would you recommend to African-American Christians about the true origins, depth, and the reality of a, Christ, a truly Christian nation, which is Ethiopia. Yeah, I would say for your connection, just go to Ethiopia and skip going to other places that you may thought that you need to go. I um, mean, uh, it's, it's, you know, it, it has all the right set up there. You know? When you it, go to Lalabella, you know, mm -hmm. you're properly connected into this, you know. The, the, that's where the, uh, they have the... the I think there were told of six of them, of these churches the, the carved Rocky, out of stone, the most famous. Yeah, the Rock Union Church mm -hmm. in Lalabella and yeah. the mountains. And, and that incredible one that you went to right at the end where the cross was, you know. Yeah, they think that's St. George or the, the, the temple or something of St. George. And, you know, heck with naming it after Europeans or whatever. But it was, it was awesome. It was magnificent. And it rained. <laughs> it rained real hard on right. us that day. We got all wet, but it was well yeah, worth me, it. Yeah, that's right. It did get soaking wet there. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It was well worth it. I mean, it was a, it was like a baptizing rain, if you ask me. But it, it was wet. <laughs> it was really wet. And uh, this, touring those temples, they look so beautiful in the postcards. And most people don't know that Ethiopia has all this history of castles. We toured a bunch of castles there. Oh, yeah. In Gondor, that was exciting, right? That was the first time I've actually been to a castle and that was a good history. I remember recording all those, you know, mm -hmm. all of that documentation, man. I, I still got people making comments from, you know. That's but uh, right. that was a, And that was a great presentation by the tour guide. Oh, absolutely. It's, absolutely. And in Oxum, you weren't with us, but Brother Yao and I got up at 4.30 in the morning on the Festival of St. Mary and joined that parade. Thousands of people all dressed in white with beeswax candles gathered at 4.30 in the morning following the Ark of the Covenant around the city or the copy of the Ark. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I was, I was knocked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you guys you, you guys are those late night party animals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were out. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that night then. Yeah. And I saw y'all come in. I was like, I'm going to bed. You guys have fun. <laughs> <laughs> We had the most amazing experience. That was one of the most memorable days of my life. During the course of that trip, you know, we were photographing and filming. Two of the elders 
stepped up to me. And, you know, you kind of feel like, well, you know, I'm here, but I kind of feel like an outsider. Are they mad at me for, you know, videotaping, etc.? The elder stepped up to me and spoke to me, the brother who was with me. I asked him, I said, what did they say? He said, they said, you are Habesha. And so on that day, I became a, a Habesha, a e member of the Ethiopian family. My uh, Habesha name is Johannes, which is a great character in their history. And I'm very, very proud. Isn't it, isn't it true that when we're given our African names, that now we have a true home, a true identity? Uh, yes. Um, and then when you go to different countries, you get different names and different parts of the country you get different names. So you may have a whole lot of names, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, it's a, you know, it's a beautiful connection. That's right. Yeah. I have my Ghanaian name Kwame as well as I have names in, uh, <laughs> several other countries. Is that amazing? It's amazing. And it makes you really feel like you are a part of it. Um, I, let's, let's begin to wrap up the conversation. Um, Rhonda says, Brother Bomani knows me from my various teleconferences on going to Ghana and Marcus Garvey Village. I am still interested in going and thriving in Africa. And Rhonda is, she's just, you would know her if you saw her. She's just a handful of just sweet, pure, dripping, African, beautiful womanhood love. Yeah, definitely, man. I'm looking forward to connecting with you know, everyone uh, that's uh, open to connecting. So, you know, so... Definitely looking forward to seeing any emails, any phone calls that come in and answer them and you know, communicate in this. You know, Let's keep in touch with everybody. Once again, give out your contact information. Everybody, please take a pen and paper. You do want to get this. And, of course, the website is easy to get to. Brother Bomani, how can people get in contact with you and Africa for the Africans? Uh, yes, uh, family. The uh, uh, main, main thing is uh, visit our website, Africa for the Africans dot org. Our email address is af t as in Tom a twenty ten at msn dot com, and that's uh, my email address that I just handle all of uh, my tours and uh, investment information. And then yeah, you can. Uh, Call, text, or send a message on WhatsApp at 404-931-9429. And that's a Georgia, USA number. Mm -hmm. um, it's been another wonderful conversation. How many times have we done this? Talk about how excited we are about what is happening in Africa. And once again, you got me grinning the whole show and longing to get back to the mother continent. You know, um, so thank you once again, Brother Bomani, for this beautiful experience and your continued commitment to seeing so, so many more people have this door-opening, life-changing experience. And last question I would ask you before we sign off is, how many people who have been on the Africa for the African, uh, Africa for the Africans tours, how many of them are, are you aware of that have now repatriated to the mother continent? Uh, yes, definitely hard to keep up with, uh, but about 20 people uh, wow. out of the 400 uh, uh, plus people over the, um, over the years. Uh, but uh, yes, and then um, more important, uh, we have a lot of people in our community that's in that process and we have... Um, a lot of people that's you know outside and that we're connected with that are just working there. So, you know, it's um, not a whole lot right now, but the influence will bring in a whole lot more. Man, that is awesome. Make you feel like Harriet Tubman sometimes. Uh, absolutely, uh, definitely. I know uh, we have to, you know, we just have to go out there and do, you know, you know me. I'm a, I'm a simple person, man. I'm about just doing the work and doing the business, and and you know, you know, you just. Uh, just trying to, you know, you know, not everyone is going to be into what we're into, but uh, there's people out there, and that's what your goal is. Your goal is trying to reach out to people so we can talk, connect, network, and do this together. That's right. Because, you know. That's you right. Know. And your son, how old is he, and how many times has he been to the mother continent? How many countries? Uh, he's been, to, uh, he's uh, 10 years old, and uh, he's been to Ghana 10 times. Uh, he's wow. been to um, Tanzania, Tanzania, um, South Africa. Togo and Benin, and then he's going to go to Senegal and Gambia coming up. All right. Uh, so, you know, a few countries uh, and things like that. Uh, but, yeah, we've been moving because, you know, that's the world he grew up into, you know, we're mm -hmm. moving. That's right. And, and uh, he will so, inherit all of this and take it to the next level. Isn't that true? 
that's always the goal and things. And you know, he's uh, he's uh, got his technology mind and everything ready because you know we're trying to get our future generations into more of uh, business and advanced technology and using it as a way to be independent and you know bringing certain you know resources together for ourselves and do what we need to do for ourselves. So that's always the goal. Um, mm-hmm. And and this, uh, yeah, and keep building from there. Absolutely. I don't want to say one thing also, Kedia. I was looking back at one of the videos we did. Mm-hmm. We did a video talking about the Black Panther movie. That video was about 1.6 million views. Unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> that you is know, awesome. Unless some people thought it was a Black Panther movie, maybe that's why. I mean, I don't know. Uh-huh. But uh... <laughs> Was that the conversation you and I had? Oh, yes. We were talking about uh, you know, uh, the Wakanda city and, that's right. that's and right. Southern Africa and just... The future of Africa, you know, right? You know, like we always tell people, and now what you hear people talking about now, mm-hmm. the actual mm-hmm. building what kind of cities and actually doing it. Uh, but th- that was the, the the conversation that the movie is going to inspire many open minds of people doing unique things in Africa That's and right. trying to duplicate some of the things they've seen. Which you know, now was which, that on your uh, personal website or Africa for the Africans? I need to go ahead and link that up so other people can see what got so many people excited. Oh, yes, it was one of the, uh, the audio recordings that we did, and I just uploaded to uh, YouTube uh, on my end, uh, which I usually keep copies of the stuff. But I will definitely, I see you have a, you know, you have a, a Facebook link right there. Mm-hmm. I'll definitely just post it right there. Oh, that's beautiful, man. And keep it simple. That's right, that's right. Um, Gaynell writes, Africa is on my agenda. I am in the prep stage. I will visit his website are there any suggestions you would give us to add to our prep list? In fact, you do have a very significant prep for travel list that you've sent out for every trip. Am I, are you still doing that, I presume? Uh, yes, uh, that's also on the website. So, example, if you click on um, Senegal and Gambia, April tour coming up, mm-hmm. you have a departure and reminder uh, list. So that will be one of the, you know, the several articles that gives the tour information, just like the tour overview, general terms, uh, what to pack, what to bring and things like that. And then also information guidelines for people to open their minds to natural health and being prepared for any health situation. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, anything that we never covered or didn't cover before, you know, we just try to cover it, but try to just make sure everything is on the site so individuals can process it and they can compare it. And, you know, whenever they reach out, they can be clear about what we're doing. Mm-hmm. That is so awesome. Brother Bomani, let's wrap it up. Anytime, Absolutely. anytime you want to come back on LIB Radio, you know the invitation is always outstanding. You just holler at me. We'll have you on as soon as we have an available um, space. Because I truly, truly believe in this vision that you have committed your life to, my brother. I got you, Black. All right, absolutely. I appreciate you, uh, Kidi, and appreciate everybody to listening. And I'll be on standby for anyone who want to reach out and connect with me. All right, Brother Bumani. Medaste, Asante, Sana. Thank you so much once again. Uh, I'm Suganalo. That's how I say thank you. And, and I'm Harik as well. Are you learning any African languages yet? Uh, not much of what I need to learn, but yeah, I'm always learning tree. Yeah, yeah, tree is, is commonly used there in Ghana. Your son, also, I always advise parents make sure your children learn foreign languages as young as possible. It's much, much easier for them to learn it. And once they learn like two or three, the process of learning a new language becomes much, much easier because your brain now starts up, uh, accepting the structure of language much, much easier. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, definitely uh, with you on that. That makes a whole lot of sense. And I was telling my little boy when he was even. Uh, Tanzania, that uh, we got to get him to learn Swahili so That's next right. time he can translate for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'll be the pan African language after the Federation will be Kiswahili. So, absolutely. Yes, uh, Kiswahili, uh, mm-hmm. the language itself, and Swahili, the people. That's right. That's right. That was so beautiful. Thank you, Brother Bumani. Another great show. All right. You take care, family. Oh, my brother. I'll send you a copy of today's show a little bit later in case you want to put it up once again on your YouTube page. Okay, appreciate it, and uh, we keep it strong. All right, that's how we do it around here on LIB Radio. This is, this is the, the new paradigm. This is the paradigm shift. This is the new window of opportunity. We, people of African heritage, we have this option. The option is viable. 
And unless and until you've gone there, seen it for yourself, or spent much time in the company of people who have traveled there multiple times and can appropriately convey to you what the experience is about, you just don't know. So don't listen to anybody who's never been there who tells you how awful it is. They're only talking about their own fears and their own desire to stay stuck on Stockholm Syndrome. We can do better than this. We can do much, much better than this. Africa is rising. We, we got next. Peace and prosperity to each and every one of you and your favorite. We aim to be your favorite. We are LIB Radio, LIB TV, and livinginblack.com. <laughs>